Hello and welcome once again to this series of slide videos for the RSGB uh, advanced course arranged by the Cornish Radio Amateur Club. And today we're going to be looking at potential dividers. Um, in the syllabus it says 3D1. Understand that two or more resistors can be arranged to act as a potential divider and apply the formula. They're talking about the formula, and we'll look at the formula at the end of a discussion uh, about um, potential dividers. Uh, but first of all, um, let's go back to uh, a topic we looked at in a previous um, video uh, and revisit Kirchhoff's voltage law. Now, if you remember, Kirchhoff's voltage law says that the sum of the EMFs in any closed loop is equivalent to the sum of the potential drops in that loop. We looked at the implications of this law in a previous video and we also said that although it wasn't explicitly mentioned in the syllabus, um, it's very useful to know because um, the implications of it come up time and again. So. Let's have a look at a practical example, the same one that we looked at before. If we have a battery with an EMF, and in this idealized case, no internal resistance, then the EMF is equal to the sum of the PD, potential difference across R1, and the potential difference across R2. So that's the practical statement, if you like, of Kirchhoff's voltage law. If we have a uh, potential divider with three resistors, we have a battery and it has internal resistance and a switch and the switch is initially open. And if the battery has a certain EMF, and if we look at the terminal potential difference, that is if we put a multimeter across the terminals of the battery, then the terminal uh, potential difference will equal that of the EMF. Because the switch is open and there's no current flowing around the circuit to cause an internal volt drop in the battery. In other words, unless a current is flowing, the source resistance uh, is irrelevant. If we close the switch, then a current will flow around the circuit. And Kirchhoff's law says the sum of the EMFs in any closed loop is equivalent to the sum of the potential drops in that loop. So let's see where the drops occur. There will be V small r, which is the voltage dropped internally in the battery due to the battery's internal resistance or source resistance. So we've used small r to represent the internal resistance of the battery, and V small r to represent the voltage drop inside the battery. There will be a current flowing around it, we said I, and um, there will be a voltage drop across R1, which we've called V1, across R2, which we've called V2, and across R3, which we've call, called R, uh, V3. And the statement of Kirchhoff's law says that the EMF in any closed loop is equivalent to the sum of the potential drops in that loop. So the EMF equals VR, that's the internal drop, plus V1 plus V2 plus V3. Additionally, if we measure the um, potential difference across the terminal, or the terminal potential difference. Because VR is already taken into account by the time we measure the terminal voltage difference, we can say that the terminal potential difference, V, is equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3. Let's put some values on this. Let's imagine that R1 is 5 ohms. R2 is 4 ohms, and R3 is 1 ohm. 
And let's say that the terminal potential difference is 10 volts. At this point, we don't really care what the EMF or the source resistance are because current's already flowing and we know we've got 10 volts at the terminal. And it's that 10 volts that's going to drive the current around the circuit through R1, R2 and R3. And that current will be I and it will equal to V over R. And in this case, it will equal 10, which is the terminal potential difference, divided by 5 plus 4 plus 1, which is the sum of the three resistors in series. So I will equal 10 over 10, and that will equal 1 amp. So 1 amp will be flowing around this circuit. And this circuit is also a potential divider. As the current flows around the circuit, individual voltages will do be developed across R1, R2, and R3. And we'll call them V1, V2, and V3. And those voltages will be proportional to the, uh, the values of the resistors. The higher the resistor, the higher the value of the voltage. Let's have a look at them individually. V1 is equal to I times R. We know I is 10 around the whole circuit, and times R is 5. So it's 1 times 5, and it's 5 volts. So if you put a multimeter across R1, you would measure 5 volts. Similarly, the calculation for V2 gives you 4 volts, and for, v, uh, and for R3 gives you 1 volt. If you add up the 5, the 4 and the 1, of course it adds up to 10 volts, which comes back to the 10 volts of the um, terminal potential difference. Because if you remember, on a previous slide, we said V equals V1 plus V2 plus V3. So we worked out V1, V2, and V3, and indeed, it adds up to 10 volts. Common factor here is that the 1 amp flows through all of the resistors. So the bigger the resistor, or the larger the value of uh, resistance, the larger the value of voltage developed across that resistor. So there we have it, 5 volts, 4 volts and 1 volts across the um, potential divider. And so if you had a question with three resistors in, in it, you could add up the, uh, work out the current first of all, and see how much uh, voltage is developed across each resistor using V equals IR for each resistor in turn. Checking back to make sure they all added up to the terminal potential difference of 10 volts in this case. If you were asked what is the voltage uh, between the bottom of R3 and the top of R2, well you'd add up the 4 volt and the 1 volts and you would say the answer is 5 volts. So if you put a multimeter across um, R2 and R3, as shown with the blue voltmeter there, you would measure 5 volts. If you put a voltmeter across R1 and R2, you would measure 9 volts. That's 5 volts and the 4 volts. So that's a practical way of dealing with uh, working out potential dividers and the voltages that occur. And this will work for all instances, whether it's uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, or any number of resistors. In the uh, advanced textbook, the full license manual, um, the circuit given is similar to that one. And uh, a formula is also given. So here we have um, a simpler circuit with just R1 and R2. There's a voltage coming in and a voltage coming out. So the input voltage is divided and the output voltage is less 
le is less than the input voltage. And to work out the output voltage, the formula given is V out equals V in times R2 divided by R1 plus R2. Well, that makes sense, doesn't it? Because the current flowing through both R1 and R2 is the same. And so the voltage of uh, across R2 is R2's proportion of the total resistance. And the total resistance is R1 plus R2. So it's R2 over R1 plus R2. So there's the formula. Um, and that formula is quoted in the formula sheet. Here is the formula sheet that you get in the advanced course. And you can see here V out equals V in over R, uh, times R2 over R1 plus R2. Now that formula relates to a specific circuit drawn in a specific way. It only relates to the circuit there on the left. For example, if you muddled up R2 and R1 and you had R2 at the top, then it would no longer be valid. So if you can remember that circuit and be able to reproduce that, essentially just two resistors, R1 and R2, forming a potential divider, and in the middle of the resistors, um, you measure V out, and across both resistors you apply V in, then that is your classic voltage divider. And if you look in the, at the formula sheet, you'll see V out equals V in over R2 over R1 plus R2. And you should be able to simply work out what the uh, voltage V out will be. And that will be the question. So I suspect then that since they've given you that formula, which relates, as I say, to that specific circuit, that is the specific question that you will get in most cases in the exam. So what you need to know? You need to understand that two or more resistors can be arranged to act as a potential divider and apply the formula. Well, we've looked at the case of more resistors than two, and we've said for that, the easiest thing to do is to calculate the voltage of the current flowing through all the resistors, and then using V equals IR, calculate the voltage um, developed across each uh, resistor individually, uh, and then answer the question basically. Um, if it's two resistors and it's arranged thus on the screen, you can use the formula V out equals V in times R2 over R1 plus R2, um, which you will find in the formula sheet of the um, exam. So I think that's all for potential dividers, at least for the time being. Thank you very much.